We're at the Flash Memory Summit. We're using Flash actually to record this. Tom Coughlin, you're the, uh, com the conference chair. Yep. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this conference? Well, this is the Flash Memory Summit, and uh, this is our 10th anniversary. Uh, the Flash Memory Summit covers all things about uh, flash memory technology, uh, both the technology itself as well as the applications, but also, in addition to that, is looking at future generations of uh, solid-state technologies and how they will impact the future of computing, consumer devices, of all sorts of end-user applications. And I want to talk to you a moment a little bit about the conference and the attendance and so forth. But first, uh, Brian, uh, you just gave a great interview with uh, one of the, really the innovators in this industry. Sure. Well, thank you very much. Yeah, I had the honor to interview Eli Harari. He's the founder of SanDisk and um, the developer of the Floating Gate EEPROM. And it's the basis of all flash memory that's used in the world today. So that, that was very interesting. He talked about the creation of System Flash. He, along with Bob Norman, as well as current CEO of Sandus, Sanjay Mehrotra, developed this back in 1988. And that's what we we're honoring this year with the Lifetime Achievement Award. And seeing how that has uh, permeated the entire industry has really been an interesting process for me. And there's been some big announcements. Uh, you know, some of the keynotes had some. Uh, any comments oh, yes. on those? Yes. Yes. There was, uh, we've had announcements from Samsung. We've had uh, Toshiba. We've had Hynix. All the major players, uh, most of the major players in the flash memory industry have made big announcements here. We've also had uh, companies such as Oracle and NetApp that are involved in, it, you know, in applications using flash memory talk about how flash memory, the important role that it's playing in modern data centers. In addition to announcements, we've also had analysis of things like the Intel Micron X-Point technology and uh, other emerging storage technologies as well. So it's uh, it's been a very very eventful uh, a very very eventful event. I think the every keynote speak speaker every keynote talk has just been really excellent. Each different, but all addressing very very important uh, aspects of uh, flash memory. From Micron saying only five percent penetration in the enterprise space with flash memory. To, uh, now to a, a whole slew of announcements by Samsung, all the way from uh, 3D, next generation 3D flash memory devices, the largest storage capacity flash memory device, the fastest flash memory device, but also uh, talking about uh, a second generation of a storage intelligent uh, standard that they've been, put, that they've been uh, working on, especially with companies like NetApp. Well, in the Toyota uh, presentation impressed oh me because, because of the whole idea of 20-year reliability, right? Oh, that's right. When we were really pleased to have uh, Hideo Inoue from uh, Toyota, who, gave, uh, who was a GM on their uh, t technology development, give a talk at the very beginning of a flash memory summit, talking about how flash memory is going to be a key technology to enable things such as automated driving, and, uh, and uh, driver, assist, uh, driver assists of various sorts using machine intelligence that requires a certain amount of local storage on the device in order to work. But as you mentioned, you know, there's things that are different in cars from a lot of other consumer applications, like people tend to have cars for a fair long fairly long time, and that's why he's talking about a 20-year life in a flash memory. And 20 years in flash memory is like eternity, you know? So this is like a whole different paradigm uh, to think about uh, stable, Capital, you know, capital consumer devices, you know, that that will use flash memory in them. Yeah, yeah PCs on wheels, right? I, another term that I've heard is uh, inflection. Word inflection. Yeah, yeah. There's been uh, many announcements. Uh, Tom is talking about a number of them. Uh, some of the ones that I helped organize in some sessions have indeed included. Uh, four speakers talking about automotive applications yep. of flash. Also, in situ processing, a very interesting idea of uh, putting uh, a lot of the smarts directly in a storage device. For example, you could do analytics at various nodes around the world. So this in situ processing is a key thing. There's also a thing called CEPH, C -E -P -H. it's an open source technology. A number of vendors are adopting that. And seeing uh, technology announcements like that has been a really interesting part of it. In addition, there's a lot of enterprise use of flash. For example, I organized a couple of sessions on hyperscale. So we had LinkedIn speaking, talking about the way they use Flash on their devices, and it's becoming a very important part of the industry. Yeah, the whole idea of uh, being able to compute actually in the memory, it really allows you to, I guess they call it scale out, right? Is that that, that's, that's one way of thinking of it. That, that term is typically not used in quite in that context, but you can think of it as sort of as a version of the Internet of Things. If you've got a lot of nodes all around the world uh, with a certain amount of smarts, why not make that, those smarts 
that much greater by putting a lot of storage and some specific application code in each of those nodes, then they can crank away on whatever data they have access to, and then that data can then be put together to uh, give some meaningful results. It's more like a distributed computing type thing than I exactly. suppose. Exactly. Exactly. And flash memory is a big part of that because it uses so much less power than, for example, rotating disk drives. And another thing is, is as uh, new technologies are developing, such as VNAND, we're getting denser flash memory devices. So I can afford to buy more flash storage for performance-oriented applications. I could buy more flash memory for a lower price than I could in the past, and it's going to be even more so in the future. That's part of what enables things like putting all of your data into, uh, all your database into your flash memory and doing some of these in-memory uh, in compute applications. And, and actually, that's also where some of these new solid-state storage technologies could take that even to another step. There was discussion here about you know, implications of this cross-point technology in, for instance, Intel's uh, new computer architectures uh, going to show up in uh, 2017, for example. So um, Flash is just having a major impact on the design of interfaces, on the design of storage systems themselves, and on the ways that they're being used. Well, and I guess it shows here with the uh, the crowd you have. Yeah, yeah, the crowd and the people that are here. We've got over, uh, we've got about 40% more exhibit space than we did last year. Attendees, we've got uh, over 25% more attendees, people that registered for this conference that are that are here. And we have uh, more sessions. We had, I think, 11 sessions versus uh, eight sessions at one time, and they were all pretty well. Um, you know, we had people in all these sessions. There was a lot of fascinating stuff being talked about. Anything having to do with Flash, it's here. Excellent, and that's Flash the, the memory, not the uh, streaming service. That's so, right, Flash the memory. So, Tom and uh, Brian, thank you for your thank time. Thank you, sir. Thanks. Appreciate thank it. Thank you very much, Ken.